Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in this episode we are checking out a new product coming from Parallel 42 called Flow which will greatly enhance the in-game user experience and navigating all the different features of Microsoft Flight Simulator plus much much more. Stick around to find out more about it. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about Parallel 42's flow. I was initially going to do a video that was completely raw, unedited, unrehearsed, and unfortunately it got very corrupted about halfway through it, and I lost a ton of information, and it just wasn't what didn't go well. So unfortunately that one backfired on me, but that's just what it is. So let's break down what it is. So first we're going to talk about the three different variants. We're going to talk about freeware, the Essentials, and Pro. Right now, all we're seeing is the Flow Free. Okay, so the Flow Free is a basic widget um, menu that allows you to uh, easily access any of the Microsoft Flight Simulator toolbar functions without having to deal with the actual toolbar itself. It's a much cleaner look, it's a much more efficient look, and has quite a few uh, options that do make it pretty cool. So, First, let's talk about one of the things that must be done in order to get going. You must go into your controls in order to bring up the menu. And you want to bind the help menu to a button, HOTAS, you know, keyboard, wherever you want to put it. But you need to bind it so it's quick access. Okay. Once you have that, that's where we can simply push a button and bring up the menu. Now, one of the cool thing about the wheel is if you notice, if I push the button again, it sends it away but it will spawn wherever my mouse is. So that was something that I actually did find that was pretty cool. And if this works in VR, which I actually haven't seen any confirmation of, so I'm gonna be careful mentioning that, but if it works in VR, that could be even more handy. Okay, but we'll just have to see what happens as time goes on. Now, one of the really th neat things that I like about it the most is again, is, is the simplicity of it and how fast and seamlessly it operates. Okay, um, now, the free version simply brings up the default Microsoft Flight Simulator widgets, okay? But it brings them up, A, rather quickly and very responsive, and you don't have to deal with quite as much clunkiness as dealing with the toolbar. Now, the nice thing is, is that everyone hates the toolbar that I talk to, so you don't have to come up here and deal with this nonsense. And there is a toolbar, you know, the menu, the handlebar hider that even hides even further. Now from up here, you can actually disable or enable it. Notice that now, when I push the button, nothing happens. And this is persistent and will transfer from flight to flight. So if you disable it in one flight, when you go to fly it again two days later, it will still be off unless you come up here and turn it on. So you do have that option. And again, this particular version that I'm displaying here is completely free. So now let's talk about some of the basic settings that come along with Flow. We're gonna come up here and go to the settings cog. First, the interface. This is the interface here. You have the ability to actually change the menu size. Okay, then coming from the wheel, same thing with the wheel. You can present the wheel being much larger, or we can make it significantly smaller depending on what your preference is. Of course, down to 100%. Now, one of the things that you can also do is if you put your mouse in the middle is you can cycle through the different pages. The number of pages determined by you, and we'll talk about how to edit those here in a minute and how to add more pages as time goes on. Now, I want you to remember that this doesn't just work with MSFS add-ons, okay? So for example, let's go ahead and, by the way, you can access the tutorial from here and it will talk to you about it as well as accessing updates, okay? So you can actually read the updates and see the things that are changing um, by simply clicking a button and get the news uh, based on this uh, or news that is based around this tool. Gosh darn. All right, so let's bring it back up now. Let's talk about some of the buttons and widgets and editing things. So if I click and hold, as it shows here, you can click on hold on any of the buttons, click and hold. It brings up the button modifier or button editor, if you will. 
So from here, you can go to leaving it as an unassigned button. So for example, if I were to click over here and set it as unassigned, hit proceed, that button is now gone and back to its default configuration. Okay, updates again, if you wanna keep in here, keep in touch with the latest updates. That's that menu that we just brought up a minute ago where you got to see the latest news. Okay, let's go back to unassigned. Okay, settings is what I had it before, but let's go up here, let's set the settings here. Okay, and it will remove the Meet Our information, which I'll show you guys how to do in just a second. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the MSFS panel. So let's select the button down here below, hit the down arrow, FS Desktop. This is an add-on that I actually uh, looked at just the other day. FSTL Traffic, you guys should know what that is probably most of you by now. This is the AI Traffic Injector from Flyby-Wire. So I can put those toolbars down here if I want as well. So I'm not just limited to uh, anything that is default to Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's whatever is on the toolbar I can put on here. I can also change the page name if I choose. So we can make this, I don't know, home, okay? And then from here, you can also see down here for all aircraft, by the way, if we want to move a page right or left, we can. So you can see now it has created a new page on the left-hand side because we moved it to the right. So it had to add a page on the left in order for it to be to the right. Um, now we can also go to another page. And now you also have the aircraft specifics. So anything in blue is gonna be specific to the G21 Goose in this particular page and vice versa. Now, a lot of the aircraft specific functions really aren't gonna be particularly useful at this particular time with the free version as you don't have access to some of the control functions. Now, one of the things that is very critical when you're thinking about, well, why would I use this? It really depends on what you're doing and what you're looking for. My personal thing about this whole shebang is that, so I set my keyboard down, I cannot stand the in-game in interface. Okay, I have not liked it from the start and I still don't. Okay, so let's go ahead and for example, let's, oh, and you can also search the available buttons assigns here that we'll talk about, uh, well, when the later versions come out. For right now, you can search and it will bring up anything that is currently available. But again, in the freeware version, that is pretty limited. Okay, so let's go ahead and now close the editor. So we're just gonna click here, exit editor. Okay, and now for example, if I click on the FSTL traffic, there's the traffic injector that it brings up. Oh, it's one of those menus that every time you move it, oh, you know what, FSTL isn't running. So that's probably why it's doing that. Um, that would probably be a good place to start. I do not have FSTL running, so that's why that's doing that. Um, but uh, same thing with FS Desktop, it is not currently running, but if I want to, I could bring that up as well and be able to access that. All right. What I like about it is the simplicity in which the menu can be accessed, no having to reach for keyboards, no having to reach for the escape key, simply being able to click, grab what I want, you know, pull this up. Now I can use a button specifically for the meet R, like that's obviously a big one. So let me show you guys how to set that real quick. That's actually probably not a bad one to have. Okay, so let's come up here and I'm just gonna type meet R, MSFS meet R, there it is. So we're gonna drop that in there. It doesn't have an icon because we're pulling from a sub menu, which is fine. Um, but so now we're gonna go ahead and hit exit the editor. And if I click here, there's the, just the meet R and I don't have to worry about anything else. There's never any meet R data available out here and that's just the nature of it. So that's just the freeware version. Now, one of the cool things is it's already optimized for an Xbox controller. So you can very easily use the analog stick to navigate your way around the different menus, to cycle through the different pages and to uh, select the button that you're looking for. Now, in the freeware version, as I was talking about, you only get access to the default widgets, okay? This is a widget right here, okay? The camera widget in this case. But if you go to the Essentials and Pro versions, well, now you get access to a few other things. So, for example, these are all going to be a part of Essentials or Pro. So, here's the Pro, and you can see what is available right here. Okay, here's some of the things that are available. Okay, you can use the auto search, which change, they've done the demonstration of changing 10 gallons to liters, and it brings everything up to what you need. You can see some of the other options in here that are available. There's toggle your engines, autopilot. Okay, but converting units is a part of pro. Okay, 
Um, that's the specific one here. Essentials and Pro, changing weather presets, very simple. And again, you can see that the mic default Microsoft Flight Simulator widget is no longer there. And now you're getting much more information and a much cleaner look. That is the probably the biggest thing that I'm enjoying about uh, seeing this is the cleanliness of the look, the simplicity of it, and the uh, very rapid response. Okay, and again, having one menu that does it all does make a difference. I will agree with that. Here's again Essentials and Pro, some of the features, and we're going to break down the features that I'm aware of right now in just a minute. I'm just showing you guys these screenshots that have been made available so you can see how far it will advance later on with the later releases of Essentials and Pro, which are the payware versions. Okay, and here's an example of the camera view. Much more of what we're used to, to from other simulators, and I like this significantly better. So rather than having to go cockpit, external, or showcase, you simply just click on the one you want, and boom, you're off to the races and switching to that view. Now, one of the things that, uh, let's take this time for a minute, and let's talk about some of the uh, features that we are aware are coming with Essentials and Pro. So first, with the freeware version, with all of the versions, the biggest things to highlight are it doesn't require any kind of third-party application to work. It works directly in-game, in the sim, is installed directly into community folder. No measurable performance impact, which I have verified. Um, it's got a very uh, awesome design. It's very intuitive. I love the wheel designs. I love wheel menus. They're very common in DCS world, and I... And I really appreciate them they're easier to navigate in my personal opinion especially depending on if they create some sort of entry where you can use like the scroll wheel on your hotas or something like that to actually navigate the different um options and selections that would be very handy uh the ability to very easily hide the menu i like this a lot without having to reach for a keyboard or uh you know hit the escape key etc that is very nice and i do like the fact that it goes directly to your mouse as i aforementioned um and then one of the bigger ones that believe it or not guys if you really start diving into some of your add-ons you'll be surprised how many add-ons you cannot scale okay if you drag the screen wider the resolution of the image still stays the same and the text stays the same so being able to scale it i think is actually a big one uh, because that gives, you know, especially anyone who might be have some sort of uh, vision or cognitive uh, impairment, that's going to make things a bit easier as well. Um, and, and I agree. I, I, I absolutely think that that's a big kicker. Uh, we already talked about the fact that it's optimized for the Xbox controller, which I know many of us use. So now let's talk about how Flow Essentials uh, is going to operate and what it brings. So obviously Essentials is going to include everything that we previously talked about, but it's also going to have many more custom widgets that were uh, designed and built by uh, Parallel 42. And that's what I just showed you guys the screenshot of, where instead of having the default menus come up, you're now going to see uh, a custom widget. Like, for example, again, here's the what we have to do for the... Um, cameras right now and you can see it, it even change it just by selecting it we are now moved uh somewhere else other than where we want it to be where before where with their widget we're simply going to pull up the camera menu and pick the view that we want it's going to take us there i like that especially as a content creator um you'll be able to find friends you'll have the option to teleport change servers fine tune the time of day instantly swap weather presets and this one caught my attention. I'm really anxious to see this. Discover tucked away camera angles. So I'm kind of curious what that's going to look like. Um, I am, I'm not aware of any hidden camera angles, so they got my attention with that one. Um, and then they've also bundled a whole bunch of widgets for the most popular actions you'd want, so you don't have to write them, was the last statement there under Essentials. So again, Essentials really has my attention, but Pro does too. Now, Pro has a few other options that uh, us basic users are going to use, but the pr Pro platform, as uh, stated here, is designed for power users with Pro and basic JavaScript knowledge. So you're going to want to understand how Flow Pro works and have some basic JavaScript knowledge. And then you can create custom widgets and share them. Um, and it does say if you're not into scripting, you can find a widget for your favorite aircraft or function and import it directly into the wheel. So there's going to be some online sharing capability that's going to come with this particular version. Now, it doesn't say anything about being able to use essentials and download other widgets. So I'm guessing that the widget sharing is also going to be considered a feature of Pro and Pro only based on how I've read this. 
Twitch integration, further enrich the experience for content creators. They've caught my attention there, although I was kind of more hoping for something like OBS. That'd be kind of cool. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, buddy, buddy. If they can bring something from OBS into it, uh, that would be kind of cool. I use OBS for my recording. And then we did see the uh, search functionality that is brought by that auto search bar. Um, and then they even have a shorthand demonstration, me meaning that you can type LL and it will bring up the landing lights widget. So there are things like that that I think are pretty cool. Now, one of the things that uh, you do want to be aware of is uh, free and pro versions of Flow are only going to be available on PC. The Essentials version of Flow is going to be available on both PC and the Xbox. So, that's pretty awesome, guys. I mean, Xbox users, you know, you guys get left in the dark quite a bit. So, at least this time, you're not going to have to worry about that. You will have an option. It will be the payware version only, but at least you have an option to experience and take use of this. And again, using an Xbox controller, which this software is optimized for, may bring some even further benefit and further desire to make that purchase. Now, I have no idea of release dates and I have no idea of what the price points of these individual versions are, nor do we have access to a detailed chart yet of what features are gonna be fully functional in each of the different variations of the software. The other thing that we wanna obviously reemphasize, this software is a work in progress still, it has not been released. I have just been giving permission to share with you what was given to me. Um, so I'm pretty excited about it. I really am. I like the cleaner look. I like where they're going with it. I like the customization options. I do feel that the freeware version, although it is nice, again, brings a little bit easier, easier use, um, is very superficial, uh, in that, yes, it makes accessing this, the various menus a bit easier, but at the end of the day, you're still going to the same place. You're still seeing the same Microsoft flight simulator widget. Um, so the freeware version to me doesn't have a ton of value. I'm very excited for the payware versions, depending on what that price point is going to look like. So as I learn more guys, you'll learn more. I will definitely be sharing all that information with you. I hope you guys found this information uh, useful today and, uh, hopefully this video will help you, uh, keep your eyes on a new target and see what happens as parallel 42 continues the later releases. As always, guys, stay safe and healthy. Hit that like and subscribe button for me, and I'll see you in the next one.